safety here and it's always easy to find somewhere safe and stable to mount a camera when you're filming in a location such as a garden shed. However, what we're going to do today is look at how we can mount a camera safely inside a moving car. So I've got most of the parts that I actually need uh, prepped and the idea is to mount the camera at the centre of the top console on the dashboard of the car. Now I've got a Land Cruiser so this is going to be different for different types of cars but the idea is I want to put a mounting plate at the top and then use these uh, pieces of metal which I've bent over, obviously protected with some plastic later on to actually latch into the air vents and I've got some suction cups which will allow me to attach it to the windscreen tensioning it to where I've um, latched it onto the air vents. Now it's worth pointing out at this point that I'm actually using one of these Manfrotto style quick release plates. Now basically a year or two ago I decided to move over to a standard quick release plate. So what I've actually done is I've bought several of these. You can buy these plates, it, it comes with both the male and female parts and you can use this to fit onto a standard tripod just with a standard uh, quarter inch whatever uh, screw fed. Now the advantage of these are twofold. One is it means that by putting these on each of your kind of tripods, sliders and so on then it standardizes and in fact this will actually accept the quick release plate, the male part of the quick release plate that actually comes with the Ronin S. So I can have the same QR plate on my camera, take it straight off the Ronin and put it into any of my devices which is using one of these quick release plates. Now the other advantage of these quick release plates are because it's quite long, there are shorter versions, but I recommend getting the longer ones or using the Ronin one which is actually long anyway. And by using these on the base of a camera, and obviously it's always going to be there because you're always going to be fixing onto a quick release tripod, it means that it's very stable because it's quite long. So with anything other than a very large lens, you can actually put the camera down without it toppling forward. Now that means if you want to get very simple low shots or perhaps put it onto a wall to take a shot, something like that, you've got a nice safe base where you're not going to damage the base of your camera and it's nice and stable because it's uh, long that way. Okay, so great investment. I've probably, I think they're about 20 quid each, which isn't cheap. I've probably got half a dozen or more of these I've bought over the past year or two and it just makes the whole workflow process much quicker when you're changing your camera from uh, uh, one particular tripod to another tripod to a slider or anything else. So if you do a lot of chop and changing with your shots and your stabilisation then I highly recommend grabbing hold of some of these. So that said the next thing is going to be a whole load of faffing around trying to actually mount this onto the dash of the car. So good luck to me on that. So after a morning building this, basically uh, 
it's working. It's the, not the prettiest of things at the moment. Can do with a lick of paint and some tidying up, which uh, I'll do later on and um, try to get a bit more presentable. But other than that, it's now fixed to the windscreen using two suction cups, which are both rated for about five kilos. So one of those should hold it on its own. And then at the opposite end, it's latched on to the air vent. So it's fairly secure, so I can try and give it a shake there and it's not really going anywhere. It shouldn't be under too much force to be perfectly honest. But now all we need to do is actually uh, take it for a test drive and see if it works. Okay, so, so far on minor country roads, no problem at all, seems very stable. So the next thing is to try something a little bit less stable, a little bit more dramatic and uh, see how this holds up. All right, so there's some big old potholes on this road here. Let's see what the footage is like. So, so far, I mean, this is a really bumpy road and I don't think there's any real chance of the camera coming off at the moment. So uh, looks like a really good way of mounting camera on the dash for my car. And I'm sure you can adapt it to work on your car as well um, using the same kind of principles. So the way I see it, this mount is gonna make two main differences. One is when I wanna do a piece of the camera stationary, then it's a convenient place to mount the camera rather than kind of balancing it on the dashboard. Uh, the second thing is it's going to be somewhere to actually mount and store the camera when it's configured without putting it into the bag, which means potentially it's quicker to get out and use in certain situations and be ready to roll. And finally, it allows you to get footage whilst actually driving. Now, I'm off-road at the moment, so I wouldn't recommend doing lots of talking to camera whilst actually driving for obvious reasons, but it does mean you can get footage even if it's just of you driving along silently or footage such as um, of your hands on the steering wheel and so on. It just allows you to, to convey that part of uh, story which otherwise gets missed because there's no way of capturing it. So um, hope you found that interesting and useful and if you have then please give it a like and if you're interested in seeing more videos that I make then please consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.